All right. And I got a bunch of hours left. Okay. okay. So I'm recording now. I'm actually on here using Zoom. And what I found was that if I use PowerPoint with Zoom, it's kind of a, a bit of a chore. So what I do is I make a PDF file. And I just use the PDF file to scroll through the slides. So if you're only showing images and text without anything that you need to click on on, power, on a PowerPoint, um, then I think you're really uh, okay with all that as well. So before I dive into the little lecture I have uh, whatnot, I'll, I want to kind of show you some of my gadgets that I've been using over the last couple of years. And uh, when I went to film school back in, uh, I guess, 2007, 8, something like that, uh, we, uh, lights were headed. Now we've got these LED lights that cost nothing. And, you know, I can make it so bright that, uh, you know, that's, that's basically it's full block of picture and like that. And now I can even use ones that change like colors as well. So I can have a cool little green back there, or you can't see that, green, change some colors, some different colors on here as well. And uh, I use that a lot of times to kind of give a little bit of definition when I have it. I like in the back. For me, a lot of times, I put a, a light behind my head, so I, I just don't have, I didn't bring a big enough stamp for that. That has a nice little key light as well, and it really makes you separate from the background a great deal. Uh, so I usually use, in my uh, studio setup, I can have as much as five lights uh, in my studio. I usually have, I need at least one light. Then I usually have another light up here. Then I usually have a light behind me, and then I might have a couple other fill lights depending on what I'm trying to do. So, Sadly, when the pandemic happened, um, I think most of us made a quick Zoom studio, and uh, I fortunately had all the technology uh, because um, I'm into making content. Um, I didn't get introduced, uh, but uh, my name is Herbert Mitchell. I teach at uh, Stephen F. Austin State University. Uh, I've been teaching there since 1999. I teach the history of rock and roll, history of jazz currently. Before that, I taught music technology classes, music theory, guitar, a bunch of other classes and whatnot like that. Uh, but my, my big um, claim to fame is that I'm really into technology a great deal. Um, I have over 6,000 videos on YouTube. I've been experimenting around with something called TikTok that we can't use anymore here in Texas and at least in uh, government institutions, but I can use it at home and whatnot. Uh, and now uh, YouTube stories are, are, are kind of taking over. And it's, well, that's one thing, that's one avenue uh, that we'll talk about. Short is almost better for a lot of aspects as well. Uh, but I like I like playing around with technology a lot. And I'm also very economical because like you, I'm an educator. That means I don't make a whole lot of money. So I gotta be really thrifty for what I do. And uh, one website I go to uh, daily um, is dealnews.com. Um, and on there they have computers. They have little, like this little gadget here, I saw on that. I think a couple of these gadgets, I actually probably bought like at least four of these gadgets off of that. And uh, this was like a little microphone. Don't even want to brand it, but you know, it was, it was like, I think this was like $12, a USB microphone that you can actually plug um, a headphone into there as well. This little gadget here, I'm a guitar player as well, and it's the Yamaha, oh, what's it called? It's some weird name. Anyways, there's a blue one and a, and a red one. The blue run, one, you can use the guitar, but you can also plug in an X, uh, XLR microphone into it. And so um, I like that because that way on the road, and it just plugs, if you have a phone or a computer that has an audio jack, it just uses, it just goes through there. So you don't have to worry about the latency of the USB sometimes. It actually works quite well in GarageBand. Uh, I've used it with, with some other, it would work in Audacity as well. And uh, these were kind of on clearance uh, for about $20, $25. Uh, so um, it's, a, it's a cool little uh, device. What was it called? I think it was called Square or something like that. You know, I got a YouTube video on it, so. Um, and you see me holding this device, and you know, that's the one I'm talking about. And it's, it's, it's kind of it's an interesting device. And you can chain these together. I haven't actually done that together, so you can have a keyboard player, a vocalist, a guitar player, and chain them all together and record. And I think that was kind of the, the, the mindset of that originally as well. Uh, one of the most important parts of aspects are two things. If, you, if they can't hear you, that's a problem. They can't see you, it's still not good, but it's not as bad. If they can't hear you, they're going to stop. So we kind of got used to a uh, mindset in a lot of ways of doing podcasts, right? The idea of being able to uh, tell a story uh, verbally uh, and along with visually is great as well. But if you can't hear the person talk, so a lot of times you really need some quality audio. I got a MacBook uh, Pro here, and the audio is decent on there, the, the, especially if you're really within 
of an arm length sway is, is fine. Now, if I walk over here or point my head over that way, the audio is not going to be near as good, of course. And so, but what you should do is get you a lavalier. So this is a lavalier that you can plug into a phone. They have uh, they have ones that specifically plug into the the, the, the iOS, the, the what, lightning the lightning one, uh, and then they have the um, the USB C, which has become standardized. And they seem to work pretty well. And the, to me, the wired is the best. Now, I do also have my little bag of tricks here, the little wireless microphones. And they run off of, not quite, this one here doesn't really run off of Bluetooth. And one of my problems, and you all correct me if I'm wrong, you try to do wireless Bluetooth, there's always this shh, a little bit of hiss. Have you all noticed that? A little bit of a crackly electronic sound. And these have that as well, sadly. But I can plug this into, uh, this, is, this is the one that's the USB-C. Uh, I can plug that, that into my Samsung phone and uh, put this little bottle there, which is wireless. And I've gone 30, 40 feet back line of sight and I can use the audio. So I can walk into frame and have a cool shot and actually have audio. Uh, the rule is this, in film school they taught us this, lavaliers within a hand, <laughs> And basically, uh, if you wear a tie, or a tie, well, I wear a tie all the time anyways, but it really works pretty really good with uh, model ears uh, because it's, it's, this is kind of a nice area you want to have for your model ears right here. Um, the next aspect of it is that a microphone, you have adventure microphones and you have um, dynamic microphones. And these are, with, these are what I would call with an arm's length. You know, maybe, maybe an arm's length or, or, or body's length. And then we have something called shot short shotgun, which is, you know, basically like a bottom, uh, like a body point that you point towards somebody. Um, all of them have a little bit different sounds depending on what's going on and what's, what, what we're using. Um, so that one's the Android one. This is actually the, the, the Mac, the Mac one, or the Mac. And the cool thing about this one here, this has a rechargeable case to it as well. So you plug that into the phone, obviously it's going to use the battery from that, but the little microphone itself needs to be charged up. So, those are some cool little aspects. I highly recommend, and I got some over here, you can get a lot of layers, wired lot of layers that go are 20 feet. And so if, you, if you're sitting down in a situation, in a classroom situation where you're not having to move around a whole lot, these, to me, offer the best quality. Uh, this particular one here can plug into the microphone, into your phone, but also into, if you have a DSLR camera or one of those mirrorless cameras that has, a, has an audio jack, you can plug that into it. And I make short films um, on the side, and this is my sound person, basically. I plug in a lavalier into the, into the camera, and I check the audio levels, make sure it's all working out. And I made three or four independent, you know, 10 minute films, and the audio is better than the audio I had in college. Uh, because the lavalier is right here. There's a couple of things also I learned by doing my own little independent filmmaking uh, aspect of it. Um, when you make films, you can apply this to your content as well. I can only use one shot. So if I have a wide shot, a close shot, a mid shot, a head shot, I can only use one of those. So when, I, when I, I'm doing a narrative film, which we repeat the lines over and over again, what I, I typically do is I go from close to far away, or far away to close. And what that means is that I'm going to steal the audio when I don't see the lava layer. And then when I use a wide shot, obviously I can't use a lava layer, so I'm going to use that as a scratch code and steal the audio from up close. And there's little things like another person's talking. If something's not quite right, I can go look, look, go to the reaction or go to something else. And uh, that's some of the things of this cutting 6,000 videos over the last bunch of years that I've just gotten really fast at editing. And, uh, and realize that I don't have to do, um, get perfect audio every single time. Because it, it's, it's not that it's impossible, but it's very cost prohibitive. And once again, we're educators, and we're, a lot of us are just doing this ourselves to figure this thing out. Um, remember Andy Warhol said we all would have like 15 minutes of fame, 10 minutes of fame, something like that? Well, really at this point, we're all kind of our own little broadcast stations today. Um, it, and the idea of using uh, Instagram or YouTube or YouTube Shorts or you know TikTok or whatever um, video uh, program that you're going to use uh, to share things on. I mean that's what we are. We're creating content. So, but once again, 
I recommend the law, the wire lavalier over the wireless ones because it just, frankly, it gets get better, it gets better audio. It just really does. And depending, you know, if I get like sometimes I get like this right here, so it's like the eyeballs and nose. I got a lavalier right here. It's going to have great audio, even those. I've had, you know, these diesel trucks go by and. It's fine. You hear you hear the car go by a little bit, but you hear the audio perfectly. So uh, even with these ones here that are wireless, I can stand out next to the highway and it's fine. I, I have really good audio. So if you're inside your house or you know in your situation, you may have a classroom that's really noisy. Um, you may have a lot of the, those type of uh, things as well. Um, stands are always important. I already showed you that stand there. Uh, those have gotten to be more economical. You can get a regular tripod and have a tripod that you can connect to your phone. Um, and the, the cool thing is that, I'm, once again, I'm really into economical tech. Here is an iPad mini that I paid $20 for. It's, I, made, I think it's an iPad mini too. Um, it works fine with GarageBand. It works fine to record video. Um, I, have, I just bought these little $10, you know, those kind of little, little computers. So um, I mainly use that as a stand because I can use that as a stand like that or like that as well. So it's kind of a cool little uh, aspect. So you can use older technology uh, to be able to, to make content. And same thing, most of us probably have several phones that we don't use anymore. If they can still hold a charge at all or even put a you know, power brick to it, um, you know, th there you go. As a matter of fact, a lot of the films, the last film I made, uh, I, the, whole, the whole film was outside. I use these battery packs and these type of lights. Actually, I have a little bit. I have a little bit better lights in this when I make films, but basically everything was battery powered, so I don't have to, I don't have to worry about bringing out a generator, so I can go outside and film as well. And uh, if you're going to make content uh, inside your house, if you don't have a lot of uh, areas to plug in things, um, you can do that as well. And also, like this can get in a really small spot if you're uh, if you're a little bit confined in some aspects. I'm trying to think of anything else on here that I want to wire a lot of. The lavaliers we're going to talk about, wireless lavaliers, microphones. Um, this is one of the stands I just love because it takes up almost no room at all. And it looks like a silky stick, right? But it actually is a little bit, it's a tripod also. So that's kind of a nice little aspect. If it can take up much room, you can put that into your case or whatever, it doesn't take up much room um, as well. Well, um, any, any questions on this little demo part before I talk about some of the aspects, because that's usually what, why a lot of folks like to, to know what people do and how they make their content. And I use everything from Zoom to the phone to a DSLR. Um, most of the time, because of time restraints, I just use my phones to make content today. And I use a program called Splice. I don't know if any of y'all use that. Uh, since last year, Splice has actually come out on Android. So now I can actually edit films on this, this Android phone as well. So that's, that's really been a game changer for me because I, I, can, do, I can edit things really quickly with that. Um, I'm in Who's Good, and of course, you know, if you're into Final Cut or Premiere, those are all great uh, pieces of software. Um, what I learned a long time ago, and you all probably would agree with me, those that it's been technology, I don't worry about applications because those come and go. The concepts are important. So if you understand what quantizing is, it doesn't matter what software you use. You know how to cut and paste something. It doesn't matter. What, if, you, if you're going to cut a frame here or loop audio around and increase the dBs, it's going to be a, there's going to be that functionality on any piece of software that you use. Okay. Any, you got any, zoom, you got any zoom right there? Yeah, what I'm doing right now is I'm recording the Zoom and I actually uh, uh, put a city on there that is recording three things. It's recording both of us together on my, my talking face and the, the screen. It's also just recording the screen by itself. It's also just recording me by myself. So in an editing software, I can focus on me if I'm showing something, or go back to a slide, or get rid of me all together. So there's a functionality, and this is a paid version of it. I was getting ready to say, that's a paid version. Yeah, it's a paid version of it. So yeah, I, I haven't found a, a more economical uh, way of doing that. And of course, you can record, you know, the free version you can record, uh, I believe it's 40 minutes to your hard drive, and it's, just, it's, and it's just one of those areas. However, if you had another phone or two, you could do something similar. As well, because if I uh, if I put the little stop video, it just shows that screen there. Um, as well, so like, yeah, it's it's multiple ways of making content um, as well. 
Well, I'll, I'll, I'll answer some more questions. I, I know I got a little section here, but um, I mean, I spent a lot of time making this little PowerPoint, so I guess we can look at some of it. But I do realize the hands-on parts probably, uh, the, the gadgets are a little more fun than anything else. If you notice, I, I had basically everything in that little backpack as well, so it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. Um, although I have a lot more at my house, so this is what I threw into a bag coming over here from, uh, from Nacogdoches. So um, let's talk about a couple of things, if y'all don't mind. Um, the one thing that I didn't realize, you know, when you think about being a content creator, I'm a composer, I'm an actor, I'm a filmmaker, I do photography, I, I, I uh, make videos, I write, I do research, I uh, make web pages, and, and uh, even, even sort of, well, I write books, but uh, I need to do some more of that. So I've done, I've done all of these type of things. So if you do any of these type of things, you really are a content creator. And really, you know, once you get something that's a tangible form that other people can see, whether it is your students or whoever else you're trying to connect with, um, th this is all, all part of it. There's a little TikTok clip there. There's a picture, of the image of, a, of a, some photography there. The reason why I stand by that fire hydrant, I use a lot of old lenses that are manual lenses, so I need something in focus for me to walk in front of, to take a photo on, on a timer. So, most of y'all never have ever have dealt with that, but that's one reason why I need something that's to stand still and that, that fire hydrant hasn't moved to, since I've been sent to that fire hydrant. And there's a picture of the last film I made. Um, and uh, the Bricks, well, actually, no, that's actually the one before. I actually had to do the Bricks, Bricks of Streetport also. So, and, and you kind of see the lighting on there with the different gels and everything like that, and a close up um, look on that. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about depth of fill a little bit later on, but. The depth of field, uh, the last person on this, there was a session that was just the, 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 talking about content creating a minute ago, and he talked about that. The phones today, and the only reason why I bought that new Samsung phone, but it has a portrait mode on it. And so, and for like $40, you can get you a, a phone. Now, I will say this, it's not the same as a DSLR. It's using computer programming processing power to look at algorithms and what like that. There's something about when you put a 50 millimeter lens on a DSLR camera and then I can blow out the background and do the f-stops and get down to 1.2, I'm gonna have that nice and blurry in the background. Or if I need to sharpen it at 5.6, it's still a little bit blurry in the background. Or if I need to go to the 8 and make it less uh, out of, uh, the background less out of focus. That's actually the mechanics of how that works. The, the computer does a pretty good job. Um, and so when I, when I, I played around with it a lot lately and it was like, well, no, it, it's, that works 90% of the time. Every once in a while, you get like this uh, a point here, then you see this point in focus where it's supposed to be the background. So I'm sure there's some ways to go in there and edit that as well. So all you are, if you're teachers, you, you make content. You are a content creator as well. Um, I like doing this up here a little bit because who we are, we're teaching. And uh, I fall under, oh, where am I at? I, I guess I'm Generation X, 65 to 79. And then uh, our, the, the students that we're teaching right now are, are getting are, is Gen Alpha, and the I, I Gen, I Gen Z. And so it's interesting to see, to see those dates there. Go back to my dad's generation, my grandpa's generation up there as well. And if you look there, 1910, the greatest generation, you know, and compared to 2023, how different the technology is. Um, wasn't it 1906 was when radio came around? We don't even get a microphone, a, a real microphone until like uh, 1925. And so before that, if you listen to like the first jazz record in 1917, it's recorded with these big cones into and, and etching it onto the records. So that's one reason why the fidelity of those first records are just not very good because it wasn't even a microphone, it was a cone that they basically screaming into. Um, and, and, and you think of all this technology that we have today and whatnot. And, and you think about this, you know, most of us are old enough. There's me when I first started teaching uh, SFA. Yeah. Uh, that's a Mac computer, former 60, six, uh, 7600, I think. There's a zip drive on there. Remember those? Oh, yeah. Some of y'all might remember that. Remember the CTR monitors that were, and I think that's a whopping 15 inches of amazingness, which was pretty big at the time there. Um, anyways, the idea of buying a CD is gone. You know, paying to, to buy a song. You, you'll pay a subscription service for Spotify or Apple Music or whatever. Uh, buying a DVD. Um, in a lot of ways, going into a bookstores. There, there's, there's these niche markets for record stores and bookstores and 
video stores, but for the most part, you're not going to go rent a DVD too often. Uh, and I did uh, going home and watching a TV show. I remember when I was playing in band, um, the A team was on Friday night, so I tried to VCR the A team, so I'd watch it after the game was over. And so, you know, that's that idea is just, you know, just gone in a lot of ways. Um, and in some ways, there's good, there's pros and cons. I mean, the idea when I put a, a record on Spotify, I don't have to make physical copies. It costs me about, it costs about fifty dollars. No, 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 sorry. It costs about fifteen to twenty dollars to put a CD on online, and then it's just there forever. And uh, actually, as a CD baby, actually, a, I think I just saw a deal on my email. It's like it's five dollars for a record or song right now. So if you got like a bunch, and you can put as many songs on on the album as you want. The last album I made um, is 50 instrumentals, and the reason why I, I, I put it online is so I can use my music on my TikTok videos. So that way I can use my whatever sounds I want to be able to use. A lot of the songs I took off my vocals and just used the guitar parts from that, or I do a lot of uh, electronic music as well. And so uh, I think it's kind of cool that you can go on Instagram or, or TikTok and, and pick your own content and use that as well. So that was worth the $5 for sure. And uh, I remember I saw this uh, this advertisement from Radio Shack, and uh, it basically someone said everything in that photo you can use on your phone. And so if you look there at that keyboard, the tape recorder, the phone, the speaking spell, you know, the camera, the Merlin, the calculator. Anyway, it's got a bunch of stuff on there. Um, all that stuff we carry around basically, you know, very easily on our phones today. Um, the idea of learning from uh, learning online, I, and I think we're all the same way, aren't we? That we all learn stuff constantly. Your refrigerator clicks. I remember I went to go visit my dad, and I pressed the wrong button on the microwave, and I locked it somehow. So I went online, typed in whatever it was, and click, 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 and then that way it unlocks the, the microwave. I don't know why they had that way you lock out the microwave, but whatever. Um, but we all learn, uh, uh, and most of the time, if you ask yourself a question. How long of a video do you want to watch to fix a microwave from being locked out? You don't want a 20 minute intro, get to the point, right? Bam. Get done in 10 seconds, get done in 30 seconds, get in and get out. And I'm scrubbing through stuff to, to, to get to the action. And that's one thing that I've evolved over time. Uh, I, at first, I was trying to mimic, you know, 2006, 2007, I was trying to mimic like a, like a TV show. There's a little bit of an introduction there, and all this talk, and now people just bam, cut right to the action. And personally, um, I still I make content on my YouTube channel. And I take the same content and I make it 30 seconds or, four, or, or a minute long for the YouTube shorts. I have a lot more people watch the shorts because I'm just getting right to the point. And so for us as educators, a lot of times, um, I think it's a good lesson to get to the point. As academics, trust me, I can pontificate forever. I get paid to talk. I've been talking for 26 years. I can talk all day long. Uh, but the idea of getting whatever the content is very quickly, I think that's the thing that's, that's paramount in a lot of aspects. And for us, we're always going to hit the internet. Since I have a smartphone, we create content uh, and we think of that very short bits of information, like I mentioned before. So, anyways, I kind of cover all together. The idea of, of sound bites and memes and text. And, so, I think you all probably seen that one before. I saw that on Facebook the other day. I thought that was kind of interesting. Although that's probably more of a difficult time to apply for. But. And then it's not rocket science, right? It's music theory. Anyways, I love, I love music theory personally. Um, and of course, the idea of social media is Axum Jacks. I don't know if we have Lumber Jacks out there, but you know. Uh, anyways, we're all thinking of that. And of course, I already talked about Spotify. You can make, someone can take a picture of that and go right to it and play this. And I think for us, it's like $10 a, 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 a month. Students can get it for five dollars a month, and um, so, so it's just you know they have access to every piece, every song basically ever written. Um, this is really, really quickly. Well, the idea of social media, and I know in a lot of ways it can seem overwhelming. Um, to me, I don't understand uh, Snapchat. I understand. I just it, it just never clicked with me. Instagram. I'm, I'm I'm a photographer. I understand that. Take photos. Put a little. Hole on there, that makes sense. Uh, TikTok, I didn't get it at first. And then it gets to be really addictive. I'm, and I, I'm assuming a lot of you are the same way. You will watch one thing and then 25, 30 minutes later, you're still on there. And it's really, 
to me, what's fascinating about TikTok, and I guess YouTube Shorts is trying to mimic this as well, is that really quickly it figures out what cat videos you like, what technology videos yeah. you like, what, and it, it's really, because like how you swipe or whatever, it's, 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 it's fascinating and scary as well, and if you've been following some of the artificial intelligence, the AI, uh, it's going to be a very interesting future in a lot of ways. I will say this, that right now with AI, the same people 20 and some odd years ago that understood how to use Google, the ones that understand how to use AI today are going to be the next gatekeepers for a lot of aspects. So I would encourage you to dive in to learn about some of that artificial intelligence right now because it's, uh, there's a lot of pedagogical uses to it. There's a lot of really, I think, positive things that can come out of it. Um, I think we're going to have to re look at some lessons and how we ask to write papers and things like that. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just a different approach to things like this. Uh, does anybody have uh, the rainfall totals for Nacogdoches, Texas, memorized in your head? So we can look it up in three seconds. And what's more important is that knowledge, why that's, why that's important. Like it just has a lot more water than here, uh, or definitely in, in, in West Texas, right? And that's more important to understand the, the, the minutia of data on there. So um, I, would, I would think that you know, think that as well. And you know, if you told me about this, like I don't watch television anymore, you know, I stream stuff. And you would have told me as a kid, one day you won't watch television. I'm thinking, you're out of your mind. I love TV. But no, I don't, I don't even think of TV anymore. I'm thinking streaming services and things like that. So anyways, y'all, I already talked about YouTube Shorts, Insta Instagram Reels, and since Meta and Facebook are connecting together, they try to, you want to push this on Facebook? I do not. You know, anyways, like you do on there. Twitter, uh, I, I never really got really into Twitter a whole lot. It's, it's, it's been interesting in the last uh, uh, half a year or so. Um, I think there's a lot of people that love it for news. Information that is a, that is the fastest place to get information. I think is on Twitter, uh, Snapchat. Once again, I don't really understand that. Spotify, TikTok. I, we got kind of a mandate saying that we can't use TikTok for any official purposes. This is the same way in elementary and high schools. Okay, uh, will that last forever? I don't know. I don't know. Um, and I do understand. I, I do understand that a little bit because it, like I mentioned before, it's really how you get tracked is. Uh, you know, I mean, we all, you know, what, what they say, if you're not paying for the product, you are the product, you know. So, I mean, if, you, if you're not paying for something, then, you know, there's a, there's a way that people are making money. And, it's, and it's, if you're not paying for it, someone else is paying for that gap as well. So, the idea of, of creating content, I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess most of you all are thinking about some type of uh, educational aspects. Uh, you know, I think about when I taught elementary music, teacher reporters or the, the fundamentals of clapping. I don't, are you all the same way that the idea of clapping in three is harder than clapping in four? I don't know if that was the same for you all. Or for you all. Maybe you all are better teachers than I was. But that, I remember clapping in four was really easy, easy to teach the classroom. Something about thinking in three was like a little bit different. So I could make some clapping things like that we're hearing over there uh, to, 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 as content, as reinforcement. So the idea, the, the, one, the one big aspect, because I'm sure all y'all are teachers, you all do, you all talk for a living. You all get in front of a group and talk and share your knowledge. And uh, so all of us, uh, it's a little bit different talking to this group than, than it would be some other, when I go do this similar talk to like a comic convention, where they may not be used to talking. Um, you you got to obviously count. You have some type of skill set or else you wouldn't be a teacher, either pedagogical wise, music wise. And you're going to be able to, to teach something uh, to, to your students. So, anyways, I'll dive into some more of this stuff as well. But the idea of lessons and how-to videos and tutorials, uh, lesson plans, reminders, all those things. And probably 50 things I can't even think of or 100 things I can't even think of right now that goes along with it. I kind of already talked about all this already, the idea of having a, a microphone. This is my Zoom setup that uh, like we had like five days when uh, during spring break when we had to go the, the all online, the all, all remote. And fortunately, like I made films, so I just put everything, everything there is mine except for the laptop. And that was the, school. this is my laptop, but uh, that was the school's laptop. The, the little microphone there, the, two, the lights there, uh, 
um, I guess the backdrop that's the schools as well. But anyway, so uh, the idea of, of cameras and tripods, I think all of us got a little bit better at, at using Zoom or whatever software you use. It's a similar base of, of video <coughs> conferencing software as well. The tripods, I like tripods because things don't move. Lavaliers, as I talked about, I love lavaliers. Uh, OB lights, audio software. And I think Zoom or video uh, conference software is, is, is crucial in a lot of aspects. And uh, I'll share this as well that uh, I'm even getting to the point where I do ask students sometimes when I'm not as hip about things. They understand things, they know what's the cool aspect, what's going on. Um, you know, it was a really big epiphany to me when students don't use email. They don't understand email. I get this a lot. Did you get my email? I'm thinking, well, did you check? Because that's kind of how it works. The, you know, the, and uh, they like check every other day. You don't check every single day. But if you can't figure it out, a lot of times the student can help you figure it out as well. And in a lot of aspects, maybe you're uh, fostering or nurturing a future teacher in some ways. Um, uh, giving, a look, giving some praise to a student that has some technical skills or not. So, I already did the demo already. I'll, I'll talk about a couple of setups that I have. I got more than this, but again, I got a DSLR camera, tripod, lights, and all of there. Uh, an iPhone, tripod, lights, and all of there. Um, a laptop, webcam, and you can hook up multiple webcams as well. The built in webcam on this Mac looks pretty good, uh, but you can get better cameras depending on what you're. Want to spend. But you can also uh, angle them at the place that you want. What I did was I took one of my uh, DSLR cameras I no longer use, and I used that as the camera for my video home studio, my Zoom studio. So, um, and that, that video quality is a lot more than, than that. Um, there's a picture you can sort of see there. See how the fire hydrant's out of focus here and in focus there? And this is, um, you know, what I, this would be pull out like an F12 probably. That would be more like a, uh, like an F11 probably. Uh, fill a, a stop there. So you can kind of see what you're able to, to do. The focus is definitely on, 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 on me there. And what you can do, if you do have like a DSLR camera, you can get a lens that will focus on your face and then the background is blown out. Although Zoom does have it where it does that kind of automatically, but it's kind of, you know, glitchy a little bit, you go like that and kind of see a little bit or whatever. Uh, you actually have the, the optics of that as well. Um, software, uh, I use all these uh, pieces of software. Um, uh, Premiere, uh, Premiere I learned at film school, so because I was editing my feature film there. iMovie and, and uh, Final Cut are connected together. It's like GarageBand and Logic connected together. Audacity, and once again, it's Spice is what I use mainly on the uh, on the Mac OS, and now on the Android. So I'm happy to use that. And there's some examples of lighting and cameras and things like that. Anyways, uh, these M boxes are, are, are really cool. The, there's so many of those US those audio uh, interfaces that you can use today. You can just plug in your microphones in there. You got a regular uh, XLR microphone. Um, there are also there's some really cool um, microphones like this that are USB. There's one that actually mimics the, uh, the 50, the uh, SN50, 58, 50, 50, anyways, microphone, and it, it works really good for podcasting as well. So. Anyways, I got a couple of pictures of, of TikTok. I mean, you can go uh, find a site or, or an application that will download a TikTok video without their, their little TikTok stuff on it. So that way, the, the branding that way, YouTube likes that better, but it doesn't have the branding from TikTok. Or Instagram likes that better, so you can do that. So uh, I, I do two easy chords there, how to play uh, rock using classical technique there, how to play mirror headline on a $56 violin, I think, yeah. And then I do a lot of open mic nights, and anyway, so you can kind of see the some some ideas of, of things that I've been able to do. So I have a question. Sure thing. Um, on your TikTok videos, 
that you go back up to the desk. So, so did you record that on your phone or a laptop or via Zoom? Most of these would be on the uh, on my phone, just because that's faster. Uh, you can't upload uh, things to um, your phone, but that takes a little bit more uh, time. And I have done that. I have done that as well. But these ones here, I, I, again, I have. I used to carry a tripod with me, uh -huh. and I just put the phone on there and go in front of a piano and play whatever I'm playing. And so you used to have, uh, if you were singing, you used the earplug and another source, another device, correct? I can, yeah. I and then you use your uh, the, uh, tripod with your phone. And yeah. And everything. Yeah, base, basically, there are ways that you can mix uh, into the phone, mix into the computer. Uh, I probably would use a computer if I was mixing various things, though, because it's just better. So if you were on Zoom, you would not have the same type of quality, unless you had a microphone and a light. And yeah. The, they talk about garbage in, garbage out. So if you have good audio going into whatever software, uh, you'll have a better product coming out. So, and, and I, I know tomorrow there's going to be a lot of folks down there having podcasts and audio um, pieces of software specifically. And uh, it costs a little bit, but, but again, this one here was like $20. You can find these for $20, $30 that are plug in USB. Uh, are they as good as a Scarlet? Probably not. But do they get the job done? Yeah. They, for most of us, we're not worried about making a, a, a number one hit on the pop charts. We're teaching something. We're teaching the activity, um, and, and again, we're educators as well. So um, let me go to the, the last part. This is a little bit more of the academic part of this lecture, um, and talking a little bit about content creation. So I think it's important to get the, to even define what this is. Making and distributing various forms of content, like videos, articles, images, and, and audio, to engage the target audience. So for you all, probably the target audiences are going to be your students. That's what, what the target, target audience is. And I think it is it's good to have an idea of um, who you're making content for. A long time ago, when I started on YouTube, I uh, didn't know what to do. And if you go look at it, I kind of equated like the first cinema. The, the first films were like of someone sneezing, a train going down the track because they didn't know what to do with that medium. And it took a little while for YouTube to figure out what to do in the content. Pretty quickly got to be a, a, a lot better. Um, and I kept continuing doing what, what, I would, what I would do. Daily stuff, music stuff, videos, short films. I just put it all on there in the same page. Today, you really kind of need a niche market. So if you're focused on an elementary or high school or whatever, that will get you more, more traffic if that's, if that's your point. But also, I remember this. If you're making content, you don't necessarily need a big group of people following you, if you're, especially if you're just focused on your students as well. Um, it helps, uh, you know, content creation helps uh, build a brand, drives uh, traffic, and showcases expertise, and provides value to the audience through entertainment, education, and inspiration. And I think that's one of the, the biggest parts. If you're going to make content, um, I always talk about this, don't bore me with your boring song, your boring video, your boring poem, your boring whatever. Uh, get to the point, make it, make it good. If you don't even like it, no one else is going to like it either. And you need to assess why is this not working. And, and, and some of us are in front of the camera. I love being in front of the camera. Some of us never want to be in front of the camera. So maybe a podcast would be a better option there if you don't want to actually be have a video part in front of the camera or whatnot. Yeah. Um, so reaching students is, 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 of course, an important part. Music lessons, that you don't have time, maybe you don't have time to talk, cover music history. Maybe you don't have time to cover theory. Um, and also to re reinforce knowledge and skills. I know when I taught elementary music, that would be very helpful to have ability to share counting rhythms or working on a, on a, on a song, um, have, a, have a track. Uh, an isolated track for audio for, of actually the melody itself would be great to have as well. So targeting your audience, we already talked about that. Age, of course, is important. If you're making stuff for elementary versus high college or high school, it's going to be different. You know, is this a hobby or passion? Uh, there's a lot of content out there for guitar, and uh, there's a lot of content out there for, for beginning uh, pedagogy on guitar. But there's also a lot of content for um, less content for, for folks that are more advanced. 
Uh, and so, so, and that makes sense. If there's a, the pedagogical market is always the bigger market as well. Um, and the idea of you know beginning students and professional is good. So having that's an important part. Plan your content. I, I I will I write a classical guitar study every month. The, week, the first day of the month I write a classical guitar study. And there have been times where I record myself playing that because I just literally wrote it that day. 20, 25 takes until I actually and I think that's good enough. I'll just move on from that. So a lot of times you might need to practice a little bit uh, to be able to make your content. And don't be afraid to reshoot something. I, I see sometimes folks put out things like, well, I guess they felt like they didn't feel like re recording that part when they're stumbling over words or stumbling over something. Uh, so plan it out, practice it, and uh, you know, have, a, have a good, and also like this, uh, you can think of this as what they call evergreen. If you do it right the first time, you can use that content for a long period of time. Um, and so uh, I think that's a good, good, good way of looking at that as well. Researching topics, you're, you're experts on so many things as well. And I think the idea of a podcast is great. I think a podcast can, but we're dealing with audio a lot of times, whereas unless we're focusing on reading notation. Um, and again, you can do a Zoom video without your face on it. You can, basically, it's a video, PowerPoint, lecture type uh, podcast at that point there. And I think the idea of these podcasts have just kind of exploded, honestly, over the last, I guess, since the pandemic and what like that, maybe before that. Because you can drive and not actually watch something. You can listen to something as you're, as you're working out or you're cleaning the house or whatever else you're doing. So the podcasts are really, really, really powerful in a lot of ways. Are you going to make it public or is it going to be private? Are you going to share your knowledge with the world? Um, or is this only for your students, yourself, uh, your, your students? I think uh, you can put your content behind a firewall um, at, at your school. That means your students can only access it. Um, so. That might be something. And also like this, the idea of consistency. I make content every day. So I'm a daily person. Uh, there's folks like you know, Mr. Beast, if you know who he is. And his last video he did was he gave a thousand, um, uh, what was it, cataract surgeries uh, to, to people from around the world. If you don't know who he is, he's like a like fourth biggest YouTuber. Well, his content's like multi-millions of dollars every time he makes a video. So he doesn't make content every every day, but the content he makes is great content. And he focused a lot on doing research about what engages an audience. And we'll talk about viral videos in a second there. Uh, but, you definitely, but also doing something weekly or monthly is fine. Same thing, like if you make if you decide to make a podcast, I, I, do a season. You know, um, we used to have 26 episodes in the 18. Now how long is a season? 10, 8, 13 episodes, right? So you can do a 13 episode podcast and then take a couple months off and then come back next and do a second season. So you don't have to do a season, you have to do 52 a year. That's, that's too much for anybody. That's, just, that's a lot of content to make. Uh, thanks, Nate. We got the police over there. Uh, and so doing something monthly, doing something, like I said, uh, semi part of the year, I think that's a good idea as well. And you may not, same thing with your YouTube channel. You may just want to do, I'm doing a 13 week on this or eight weeks or whatever, four weeks. Um, and that makes it a lot, lot more measurable because we're all really busy. And also that does, that's one reason why we get a break every once in a while. We get a little bit of a Christmas break, a little bit of a, of a summer break to kind of recharge our batteries to come back in and teach and whatnot. So hopefully y'all get your batteries recharged a little bit by coming to this conference as well. Um, high quality content just has really good visuals. Uh, engaging visuals, interactive activities, something that you're going to engage. And one thing I didn't do forever, because I, I thought this was, uh, I, I, I didn't feel right about this, asking for a call to action. Please subscribe. If you like this content, share with others and, and please subscribe. And that's a call to action. So a lot of times when you ask your audience to do something, they will do it. Um, please subscribe, please add me to your whatever. Um, and so uh, when I started asking for a call to action, I, had, I got a lot more subscribers on my YouTube channels. It, it added up a lot faster than that. Um, the other thing like this, you know, it takes time. Uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't a fast content maker at the beginning. I got better as time went by. So uh, just like, I remember 
trying to play a ragtime piano. That took a long time. Like, had your head in, I mean, to do that took a long time for me to get finally clicked in. I'm sure the same thing. He had some epiphanies for a lot of you all that played instruments or, or, or sang and whatnot. Yet. And he had this hurdle. It takes a little bit of time. And remember, you can learn the basic parts for editing audio, editing video. Understand the basic part. A light is a light is a light. If you don't, if you don't even buy this, you got a lamp, you got a light. You got a window, you got a light. You got light. So it's just how you strategically move, move yourself around in those lives. And, you know, like, what I, when I do this, it's different than this, different than this, different than this. Uh, so typically, they, you don't really like these, because uh, I wear glasses, you get to see that. So what you can do is just put a piece of parchment paper over that. Now you've got a soft light. You get you some clothespins and put that on there. Now you've got a soft light. Uh, on here, they got a little, you put that on there, make it soft, like it's doing that there. Uh, the, the fusion, you can diffuse the light a little bit as well. So all those are things you can learn. Frame in a shot, and uh, the last session, you were talking about the rule of thirds. But the thing like this, you, you all know what looks good. And you can look at a shot and tell, this, this is good, or this is not good. I mean, you can just, you can just tell by that. Uh, as well. And of course, voiceover can be great. I have a spokesperson can be great. If you're not, if you don't like your voice, there's somebody you know that that voice that you may like, or you can hire somebody as well uh, to, to read your content. I won't spend a lot of time on promoting your content because I, I think it's a little bit different for us. Uh, we kind of have our own promotion. You, you get the link to your or the students, but you can you, you utilize social media, collaborate with other. There's a, this is great networking opportunities here. You can find someone who's an expert on whatever, and whatever you connect together, make content for them. Uh, email marketing, paid advertising. I have friends that have used that and have, been, have got a lot of success with that uh, as well. Search, optimize for search engines. Uh, repurpose your content. Like I mentioned before, uh, I make a very video for YouTube. I make it for TikTok and I make it for YouTube shorts and sometimes I go on Instagram Reels. So that same content I can use it for different places, maybe even more than that. Uh, engage with your audience with, with comments and messages, and uh, that really helps out a lot. And that takes time, it takes time to do that. Network, things like this is, is one of the things, and offer incentives as well. And they can be free things, they can be like, well, you know, um, you, you want to understand time signatures better, I'll make a content, I'll make that for you. I'll make a video on music theory that you want, that, that you want specifically towards you. Um, they can be some paid things as well, but I don't have a copy of that. So the viral videos, the biggest thing I can say about a viral video, you don't never know, you don't know how that happens. My last viral video on TikTok was, I have an older 2002 Honda Accord, and the key got bent. I don't know how it got bent, but it got bent. I always carry a spare key. Open, this is back in the day when you had keys. I don't know why y'all's cars had keys, but 2002 we had keys. Anyways. There's a transponder on it, so it won't start. It would, you can unlock the door. So I put the transponder on there and open, uh, and turn on the key on, on there, and it shows that you can put the transponder on the key and it'll start the car. Well, two things. They were saying, no, let's take it for you. Here, start over. And then the other thing is, I play classical guitar, so my nails are really big. And, there, and a lot of folks were talking about my nails, so my fingernails. Cut your fingernails. And again, I'm the one instrument where I gotta have nails. There's no other instrument that you need nails on. But anyways. So that part, I didn't, I didn't expect anybody to watch this video at all, hardly. But that got, go, that got over a million views on TikTok, mainly, I think, because of my long classical guitar fingernails. So I, I couldn't plan that. I had no idea that apparently that's, people don't like fingernails for some reason or whatever. I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I spent a lot of, I, spent, I took the lessons on how to sculpt my nails when I, back when I took classical guitar lessons, you know? So anyways. Uh, yeah, so some things you just can't predict, but, but with that connected with some type of emotion. Like that's what it was. Something was visceral. And, and for someone to write a content, a, a comment, if you think about yourself, what would make you write a comment on something? It has to be a pretty big aspect uh, for you to be able to do that. Uh, identify your audience. That's what Mr. Beast does. Uh, be creative. Uh, try, new, try a new way to teach something. Keep it short. I think that's the new thing for us in the last couple of years. 30 seconds, 10 seconds. I think about this, that um, you got bebop. Then you got cool. 
Well, bebop, you can just sing something with five, six notes. Maybe cool, you can say it with three or two notes. You can, just, can you say the same thing with less notes? And uh, I think in some aspects, get down to that 10 seconds. Get down to something that's short. On that. uh, have some type of a hook. And I think a lot of ways, start off right away. Just start off with your content. Bam, right into it. Today, today I'm going to show you how, about, how to use these lights. Today we're going to talk about time signatures or whatever it is. Uh, humor. Uh, all of us have our, our ability. I like to, I, I can joke around and, 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 and we all got our own little system of humor as it works. But the biggest one is some type of connecting with emotions. Uh, use music. Uh, remember copyright. So make sure you take care of your copyright. Make sure you don't uh, be like me. Go make your own music. Man. You can use your own music. You don't have to worry about copyright. Share on various social media. Collaborate with influencers and be persistent. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen overnight. And I won't get into the metrics of that, but obviously, the more views you have, the more comments you have, uh, the more people are seeing your content. So we'll just keep it really basic with that. But there's, there's a lot of other metrics you can go through there and dive through. So, kind of in conclusion, um, the significance of this for music educators is that we're here for student success, right? We're focusing on our students. And by getting proficiency in, on using this technology, I can share what knowledge that we need to with our students. Um, I think in a lot of ways uh, is really beneficial. And I can say for myself, I get thank you uh, comments all the time on playing a recorder, playing a piano, some type of MIDI technique. Uh, there was one thing 15 years ago I, I discovered that by plugging a, a MIDI interface into a powered USB hub, it would work. And I, there was some glitch in this map. I don't know what it was, but I, I still get emails saying thank you. I couldn't get my old piece of technology to work using that power hub, and it made a big difference there. So uh, that, that's really rewarding in a lot of ways. Um, and I know it can be challenging, and I know it can be re re challenging in a lot of, a lot of aspects. So a couple last things before I'll, I'll be quiet and let y'all ask me some questions. Um, don't give up. I finally last year I finally got over 10 million views on YouTube. So. I know this. I know Mr. Beast gets that in three seconds. But you know, for some guy in East Texas that has no whatever uh, money or talent or whatever, I, I, that was a pretty big epiphany there. And you see, I joined in 2006, so that was I've been on YouTube before Google bought it. I think being interesting, you know, uh, be a character in some aspects. If that's who you are, uh, and I think in a lot of ways, being interesting is an important part of being a content creator. Uh, you got to be confident in yourself. Well, believe uh, that you know what you're able to, to say. Uh, even coming to this little conference here and come and talk to all, all, all our friends out there, I mean, it's, it takes you a little bit of confidence to be able to, to make that happen uh, as well. Uh, research what, you, what you're doing. Um, it's, I think it's important for us to be academics in a lot of aspects as well. And we, we were educated, right? We know about research. We can conduct our own research. Um, Promote your content, and uh, I remember one of my teachers had this as a saying. He said, I don't make something to sit on the shelf. If I compose a symphony, if I compose a jazz piece or whatever, I want people to hear it. And I think in a lot of ways, if you spend a lot of time on content, content you want the least ability that people can, um, can uh, see it. Um, there's a picture of 1984 from Van Halen and a and a retro cassette player there. I bought that, I uh, bought an album for $6.50 back in 1984 when I was in eighth grade. Uh, think how fast technology changes. And, uh, you know, today for $5, you can have all the music, you know, every month. Um, so that's how fast technology comes by. I'm gonna talk about this real quick. And there's, there's these companies that go out and blanket buy everything. And uh, this happened last, last last year a couple of times. I play a lot of blues. I, I love playing blues. Every once in a while I feel like going to Garage Band or Logic, making some beats, making a blues piece. And I got flagged for the 12-bar blues. And I'm thinking, okay, I'll take out the melody. I get flagged by another company just for playing the 12-bar blues. It's the chord, no melody. And I'm thinking, all right. So I, I fight every single one of those. I go and say, this is a blues. This is me, uh, this is me writing it. I go look at my channel. I got 6,000 videos of of, of that, and uh, usually what happens, they, they uh, you, you fight it 
it takes sometimes like three months for it to kind of clear. But um, I don't post anything um, that at the same clearance. So I just wait for it to finally say that hey, it's no longer a, a copyright violation and then go from there. But I fight every single one of them. So uh, protect your copyright and, and go out there and create, you know. Um, every one of us is different. I, I love playing open mic nights, I love playing concerts, I love uh, electronic music, making films, I love acting, um, um, I love going to comic conventions, and all of those are, are opportunities for me to create um, as well. And if you all wouldn't mind, uh, I'm just, maybe it'll be blown out in the background, but it's funny, because uh, if you don't take a picture of something, it never existed, so I'm gonna say hi there. So, you know, we'll always be on that. I think in a lot of ways, be true to yourself and your audience. Be true to your students. Every single student can tell if you don't know what they're talking about. And I, I learned this a long time ago. I teach history of rock and roll. I don't know every single person that's ever picked up a guitar. And there's a lot of obscure bands that are great, I just never heard of. And it's, yeah, but I haven't heard it, send me the link. You know, just be honest, be genuine, and, uh, and just be true to yourself. Yeah, that's when I acquired my stage. That was one of the films I acted. I try to look different for every film. And also remember, you know, why you're making content. You know, it's from your students. So uh, I had a class last semester, and we uh, put on an open mic night. So we organized, they or the students organized it and advertised it and got the venue. Um, and uh, so that's why we make content to help research things. And we're all teachers, of course, as well. So I want to uh, thank you all for coming out. Any, any questions from anybody? I, I, I guess we have a few minutes left. Now we just call it a day. Well, friends, I'm up here if you want to come by and say hi for a minute. Thank you all so much. Hope you have a great rest of the time. And have a nice day, everybody. Actually, thanks, y'all.